Use caution when working with automotive batteries. Always wear gloves and safety glasses and work in a well-ventilated area. Now we've all been there. We get in it to go and instead of the satisfying sound of the engine starting, we get nothing. Instead, all we get is a click or two from the starter solenoid or we might not get anything at all. Either way, having a no start condition is a real pain. Hi, I'm Bruce Bonebreak. Welcome to this edition of the AutoZone Do-It-Yourself video series. We are going to go over a couple of procedures today, charging and testing a battery, replacing a defective battery, and testing the vehicle's charging system. But first, let's talk about how a battery works. Okay, our Explorer has a no start condition, meaning the engine won't turn over when I turn the key. This is something that's happened to all of us before, and today we're going to show you what you can do when it happens to your car. The procedures are the same for just about any vehicle. Now, don't automatically assume your battery is bad if your car won't start and none of the lights work. There could be several symptoms of a dead battery that are not actually the battery's fault. And you know what? Most of the work of figuring out what's wrong could be handled by your friends down at AutoZone. They have the specialized equipment to check each system on your vehicle and point you in the right direction. First, let's learn a little bit about batteries before checking the one on our vehicle. A 12-volt battery is made up of six cells, each producing about 2.1 volts. And each cell contains plates that are both positive and negative. Typically, the positive plates contain lead dioxide, while the negative plates are made from straight lead. The cells are inserted into a tough, non-conductive plastic case connected in series from positive to negative. The case is covered and then filled with electrolyte, which is made up of sulfuric acid and water. The electrolyte completes the circuit between the plates and makes the battery live. Years ago, you could buy a dry battery and fill it with electrolyte after purchase, but nowadays all batteries come pre-filled and ready to go. The key characteristics you need to be aware of when buying a replacement battery are the battery group size, its cold cranking amps, or CCA, and its reserve capacity for your vehicle, also known as RC. The battery group size indicates the battery size will best fit the physical dimensions of your vehicle. Many vehicles can accommodate more than one group size. The group size is typically associated with the part number. For instance, the part number of this battery is 75D. The number 75 is the group size. The CCA rating is critical for good cranking ability. The reason CCA is so important is because as the outside temperature falls, the engine takes more power to start due to the metal contraction and the oil getting thicker, while at the same time, cold temperature decreases a battery's efficiency. The RC helps power the electrical system if the alternator fails. The rating indicates the battery's staying power, or in other words, how many minutes the battery can supply ample power without falling below the minimum voltage needed to run your vehicle. When choosing a new battery, in general, the higher the number, the better for both the CCA and the RC. If you live in a cold climate, the CCA rating would be more important. A good battery will last up to five years, and that's about the time since the one in our vehicle has been replaced. Now let's discuss the tools you need for the job, and then we'll show you what to do when you have a dead battery. Only a few tools are needed to service and maintain your battery. The most important of these is a good pair of safety glasses. Be sure to put them on any time you work on your car and especially before you check the electrical system or battery. You'll also need a basic socket and wrench set and a pair of gloves to protect your hands from battery acid. Nitro gloves are an excellent choice because they offer good protection against chemicals. And don't forget our handy little memory saver. An optional tool to consider having is a multimeter. Digital meters are the most accurate, easy to read, and that's what we'll be using today. They're also very affordable. You can pick one up at AutoZone. Like I said, this is an optional tool. You don't have to have one because the folks at AutoZone can handle all the testing for you. Still, it's a great tool to have because it'll help you isolate the general cause of the battery problems yourself, and that can save you a few steps along the way. Now let's move over to our vehicle and learn how to diagnose and repair a dead battery. Be cautious when working under the hood. If the engine has been running, components will be extremely hot, so be careful what you touch. Get in the zone. Auto zone. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the Complete Car Care Series at your local AutoZone store.